Hello and welcome to ISAT Spotlight number three. I'm Chrissy, I'm your guest host today. And I'm here with Kula, an Illinois patriot who has an amazing story, but also a heartbreaking story. Welcome Kula, thank Hi. you for being here. Thank you for having me. So I wanna start at the beginning of, of your story so we can kind of get the background of sure. what's going on and then really get into the details um, yeah. as we talk. So can you tell us where this all started? Yeah, so hi everybody, I'm Kula. Um, I am here because uh, we are currently getting evicted from our building uh, where we rent. We rent a condo for not wearing a mask. And how it started is we we never wore masks. I think like the first week when the pandemic started, mm -hmm. I think everyone was because we've never like been in this situation. And, um, you know, doing a little bit of homework and like converting to Republican and like waking up, you know, the real wake up, you were like, no, there's something going on here. Yeah. Like this is not, this is not what it seems to be. We stopped wearing masks and I started to focus more on God because it was a very troubling time for us all. We were like scared running yeah. around like chickens with our head cut, cut off, you know. Um, and your, your apartment's in Elgin? Yes, okay. we live in Elgin. Uh, we are renting a condo. Uh, yeah. with, we have a landlord who owns it. And, uh, you know, they had posted signs all over the building saying uh, mask required, but we never wore them. You know, we never yeah. went, we stopped wearing them, you know, after like two weeks after it started in March. We never wore them anywhere. Um, and so, again, started to focus more on God and uh, just reading the Bible and reading scriptures and just realizing like, no, we are not fearing mm. man. Amen. We, we fear God. And as I'm, I'm a mother, I have a six and a half year old boy and a now four and a half month old boy. Um, pregnancy came later, but um, as a mother already, I was just like, no, I'm not gonna uh, teach my child to live in fear because the masks brought fear. There was so much fear going around that wearing a mask only implements more of it. Yeah. Um, so we just never wore masks anywhere we went and uh, we were starting to get harassed by the association and they yeah. would follow us around the building and catch wow. us not wearing a mask. Like, you need to wear one. Even residents, some of the residents were like, you're supposed to be wearing a mask. And I'm like, no, I'm not, you know? And they would go and tattletale to the association oh. and the association would email us or find us in the hallways and say, you know, say you have to wear a mask. It was just like nonstop. So, so then- essentially outside of your, your actual condo. In the common area of the building. You had to wear one. We, we had to wear one. All, everyone over two years old. Uh, it didn't state, it okay. just, they were just saying you need to wear a mask. Um, so, you know, even in every floor, there's about six floors. Every floor is to, uh, you, well, we use the same laundry, laundry. There's like two washers, two dryers on every floor. And they were cracking down on like saying like, we needed to wear it going to our laundry room, which is one person, like it's two doors down. Why do I have to wear a mask to leave my, my door, my home to go wash my clothes? You know, and there's cameras. I, I swear, it's like they're watching us, like, in their homes, you know, because there's two That's people. The, the Part of the association lives in the building. Um, anyway, so we were being harassed, and I started to call the police and saying, you know, they need to leave us alone. We're not wearing a mask. We live here. They need to stop bothering us about this. And they would tell them, like, you need to leave them alone, stop bothering them. The association, the property manager, <clears throat> excuse me, would get angry like the one of the police officers who's sick and tired of this crap too was like he couldn't understand why he can't enforce the masks and he's like she's legally bound to be there you can't kick her out um well you know what do you do the the property manager yeah. to the officer well what do you do when people come to work and uh, they don't want to wear a mask he's like well they go home but again she's <laughs> legally bound to be there this is her home and so because of the harassments, harassment reports, me threatening to sue, right? Um, and then the officer telling them, like, stop, they then stopped bothering us, 
and moved on to our landlord, who I already, who I had already mentioned when the f signs were first posted. Uh, I'm not okay with this. You know, like mm -hmm. we're not, yeah. we're not going to wear masks. And um, we hadn't heard from her. She does, she doesn't really communicate with us well. You know, even if things are broken, we never really heard from her anyway. The, la um, the owner, the, of the landlord. Property. Okay. Yeah. Um, but then. All of a sudden, once the association starts harassing her about these fines, um, she then starts harassing us. And so we started... What, fi what fines? So, okay, so going back. <laughs> um, so remember how this whole mask mandate started and then it ended? Well, like, right. you know, if you're vaxxed, then you don't have to wear a mask. Um, I mean, we still never ever wore a mask, but people weren't wearing theirs, you know, and so they took the signs down. Okay. And then it started up again, but this time they posted the same photo uh, along with if you're caught not wearing a mask, you are to pay $50 each time. So would that be for each, each family member as well? It doesn't state either. It just says caught each, you know, each time. Do you, um, are you the only one, are you guys the only ones not wearing so them? The only family in the There building? is another family that I've talked with who's currently um, being uh, harassed by the association. I've talked to her landlord too. She's got over $3,000 fines as well, such as us, mm -hmm. uh, for not wearing a mask. So you have, you've built up $3,000. So we've fine. built up about that much. I don't know what it is now. Okay, so I was going to um, say that back. So you, they post these signs in, what was that, August, September? About that time. This year. Yep. And yeah. then they started. And I got pregnant around that time too. Wow. So definitely not wearing a mask during pregnancy yeah um and uh at the same time my son who my six and a half year old was wearing at first wearing masks to school mm -hmm. uh, and then i switched it to like a chin guard yeah, because the um and that was you know before i was allowed to fill out this exemption which was um, approved by the school but uh, his dentist actually uh, told I'm sorry. I took him to the dentist. He was getting these like sores in his mouth. Oh my goodness. Your six year old? My six year old. Oh, he was goodness. getting these sores in his mouth and I didn't know what they were. He was crying and complaining that they hurt. I took him to the dentist as an emergency and she's like, he needs to stop wearing these masks. He has ulcers in his mouth. Oh, and because goodness. they hurt, he's picking at them. He's a child. He's picking at them. He needs to not wear a mask permanently. Um, oh, how heartbreaking. Yeah. So, you know, as a child, he, these kids, they put these masks all over the place. Yeah. And dirt and bacteria gets on them. And then they put them on their mouth. And they still don't want them on their mouth or on their face. And so they play with them. They put them in their mouths. Yeah. So that's what he was doing. He was putting them in his mouth, chewing at it. Um and uh, I, I know I can sense that it was building up anxiety for my six-year-old uh, with these masks. And I'm like, you know, so that's when I took him to the dentist, especially when I saw the ulcers. And she, you were able, so your, was your dentist able to? My dentist wrote this medical oh, wow. form and signed it saying permanently he cannot wear a Something mask. Something consider when people are asking how to get exemptions, actually. Yeah. Well, we then, too, got exemptions from our priest. Awesome. So we go to Life Changers Church. Our priest um, was signing exemptions. He's still doing them, even for va the vaccine. So um, he's writing uh, religious exemptions for the mask. Yes. And the vaccine. And uh, more so the vaccine now. Got it. Uh, the the mask uh, exemption that we got was actually sent to us along uh, with our sons, because my son goes to a Christian school. Mm -hmm. So they wrote out their own exemption and told us to give it to our pastor, and the pastor signed it, um, and then we, we mimicked that for us, and then they signed it. Got it. So we have those, um, and then the ones for the vaccine, too. Now, um, 
for so you have these so your whole family because it, so it's not just I mean it's, <clears throat> it's you, my boyfriend, your boyfriend. Uh, he has an eight-year-old daughter that comes with us every other weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, my six and a half-year-old son. Okay. And together we have our four and a half-month-old boy. Okay. That's so exciting. <laughs> yeah. So we're a big old five-person family. We're happy and everything. We, we're we're happy. You know, when we first moved into the building, it's a spacious two-bedroom, two-bath condo. We were like, oh my god, this is cute. Like we loved it. You know, we were happy to move in and. After all this started, we just started hating it, and we hate it. We just don't so want to live there. I just want to move back to the mass really quick. Uh, um, you all have written exemptions on yeah. some level. Yes. And so were those then given to the association? So the association never asked for them. We had mentioned to them that okay. we have them, uh, but they didn't care. They don't care. Um, they they just, don't care, okay. no. Um, so the landlord now harasses us and is telling us you, and this is all in text, and I've learned with a past uh, former slumlord to do everything via text for proof in case anything goes sour. Sure. Uh, from the beginning, I've done everything via text or email with her, and she was texting us, uh, pay me the effing money. Um, uh, you know, I was telling her, this is after the fact that I would call, out because I started calling the cops on her now. Um, she would call us at 11 p.m. midnight. Um, I can't believe you're effing doing this to me. Uh, pay me the effing money. You owe me money. Like, no, I don't. You know, so this like, is not in your contract. No. This is not. There's no. You've never seen any like legal paperwork behind this. She's. So the one thing that they're trying to get at, which still doesn't state anything about a mask, is that we are to fi follow the association rules. Number one, she never gave us the rules when we first moved in. We never had the rules, and number two, never. N it doesn't state anywhere in that those rules or lease that we need to wear a mask. Not to mention that those rules pertain to the building, not my body. I am not your property. There you go. That's Try right. me, because. <laughs> Anyway, so this has been like an ongoing battle and me telling her you need to live, leave us alone. Cops are telling her you need to leave her alone. Um, texting, calling nonstop. And she continued. And so I just, I would report every incident with the police because I was like, okay, this is, we're about to like, something worse is going to happen here. Mm. Um, and I just documented everything. I have FOIAs. I filed FOIAs for every, every incident. I have a case here, you know, but um, she uh, had to fix our kids' bathroom sink. Okay. And again, going back to the whole slum slumlord, she too is one where she would ignore our, our requests to fix things that mm. she has to fix. It's not like we're asking you to change a light bulb here, the toilet broke, or the the sink like something that right. as a renter like that you I signed a contract things she, she's supposed to fix she's supposed to is fix she doing like it for other people do I you know I don't know she was always like I'm busy or <laughs> I can't come or you know our kids toilet was broken on the bottom something was broken and it was overflowing and we I'm like we're paying for two bathrooms here one bathroom we haven't been able to use for a month now when are you coming and so I started having to threaten that we would pay for a, a plumber and take it out of rent she went in every time I would try like whatever I can to remedy the situation yeah. she was like on the you know she was on the defense with me like no you're not doing that like this and that and so long story short I got the city involved and okay. they don't like when you get the city involved so That's the city gets involved <laughs> see all sees all these things uh, that are wrong in our unit and they give them like 30 days to fix them or else they f start finding them. And so she's then, uh, city comes, writes up a list of what needs to be fixed and then sends it to her. And she, uh, in October, beginning of October, I think it was like October 1st of this year, 2021, mm -hmm. uh, says I need to come and fix the bathroom sink. Um, I only have a, uh, the 20th available, 20 days out. And it had already been. 
it already been like two months since the city inspector came. She's already been harassing us. We're, this is just about the bathroom now. Like, you need to fix this, regardless of me calling the police on you for harassing us. <laughs> <laughs> um, and But she was like, I only have the 20th available. So I'm like, okay, whatever. You know, like, I would rather, at this point, it's like, like I said, we hate living there. So I would rather not see her, but at the same time, like, we need a, a working sink for our kids. Right. You're there now. You've signed We're a contract. still there. You're paying your money. Yep. Um, and, and we pay our rent on the first of every month. Yeah. You know, our rent should be going towards you to fix our unit, too. And she just wasn't tending to anything. But she says she's available on the 20th. So she comes on the 20th with a plumber. And she's hired this guy. I don't know who this guy is before, but he came into our unit before. And um, they're working on the bathroom sink. And my boyfriend and I are sitting on the couch. I'm breastfeeding my four-month-old, my baby. And she's in the bathroom coughing, 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 like phlegm. And Peter, <laughs> Peter, my boyfriend, and I look at each other and like, what the F? Like, are you serious right now? She sounds sick. Yeah. And she's not wearing a mask in our... In your apartment. Apart in our unit. Yes, she's not wearing a mask. So I'm like, you need to say something right now. Like, this is not okay. She's been harassing us. She's been giving me anxiety, you know, my whole pregnancy. And um, even after, like, no, this is not okay. So he goes up to her. He's like, hey, Francis, uh, are you sick? She's like, yeah, and I can hear her. She's just like, yeah, I have bronchitis. I'm on my 15th day of, uh, after taking a 14-day round of antibiotics. And he's like, are you serious right now? He's like, you're not even wearing a mask in our, in our home. You're in our kid's bathroom where we bathe them, where we bathe our, our baby. He's like, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to ask you to leave. And she's like, really, are you serious? And she like gets up out of the bathroom and she's all angry. You don't even wear a mask. And she goes to the kitchen table, which is next to the bathroom. She's, her purse was there. She's like frantically looking through her purse. And again, I'm breastfeeding. And uh, she turns around, she, she has like these two thick packets of papers and she's like that's it you're out and she throws the packet of papers at me while I'm breastfeeding my baby she throws the packet of papers she's like that's it you're out and it says 10 days to quit and my boyfriend's like what the heck is wrong with you get out because it's like you're acting so erratic now like now I'm completely done with you you are to stay away from me and my family get out and, I, and I'm kind of laughing at the same time because I couldn't even believe that <laughs> This woman is acting this crazy yeah. right now. So what's the stack of papers? So the stack of papers is the first paper is 10 days to quit. Okay. Um, we're not going to. What do you want us to quit? To, to wear a mask? That's what it's saying, that we're not oh. following our lease. Uh, so we need to wear a mask. Um, and the rest of them are all photos of us that the association sent her. Literally, they spent hours and hours and hours screenshotting from the videos in the common areas of us roaming, you know, going in and out uh, the building, my, me and my whole family without wearing That's... a mask, with invoices. All, they're all invoices and it's all pictures of us. Like, that's scary. That's like, really strange. That's very helpful. weird. You know, cameras are put in place for security. If something happens, then you go back right. and you look at them, not sit there for hours. And I'm like, oh, there she is. Oh, there she is. You know, it's like, that's what they did. And so this is how they racked up the bill is by is, going through security and kind of docking. Yeah. Every yeah. time that you were. every And then, and then uh, in one note to her they stated that there there there's a lot more but we didn't have time to like there's three thousand dollars worth already so you literally sat there enough time right uh fifty dollars each fine you sat there for a long time it was a lot of time um so um this is where she's saying you you owe me money i've paid them some of the money you know if she was smart enough she would have been like look they didn't sign for this this is not something that was in the hoa rules either i'm not paying you like you guys are just like trying to get money off people 
but no, she's she's you know annoyed with um, getting these fines and she's kicking us out and. Um, yeah, long story short, I tried to get an order of protection on her, but I didn't present the evidence along with the mm. order of protection packet that I filled out, and so the judge denied it. But I'm working right now on getting an attorney. But at the end of the day, she then uh, served us papers. So she, we just got papers in the mail uh, two Fridays ago. Okay. We have uh, court December 6th. And wow. she is... Right before Christmas. Christmas, and... Um, yeah, she is trying to evict us now, and it's insane, and it's sad, and I know when I spoke to you at that event the other day, a few last week or so, I cried, but, like, I've been crying, and I've been stressing, and I'm trying to just look at the brighter picture here, but at the end of the day, we still need help, because um, even Josh had mentioned that buying a home, you can't have an eviction, so it's like, we're stuck now. Because um, you guys were saving to buy We a were home. saving, you know, again, pregnancy. I I lost my job in the beginning of the pandemic. So, like, there's just almost two years here now of no income to help with our home. Our lease is set to expire in August of 2022. We signed a three-year lease. But still, like, that would have been enough time for us to save, to, like, I'm just now slowly starting to get back to work. Um, I just started two weekends ago. I mean, wow. and I can only work part-time still. Right. I'm breastfeeding. Like, um, we're, we're stuck. We're at a, a crossroads. We don't know what to do. We're, like, even if we f try to find a place to move to, everything is so expensive, um, yeah. To rent, to own. I mean, it's and we're not we're not prepared to be evicted for something like this is insane. And you know, I and so the the night before November first, because again, she planned to come on October twentieth because she served us that ten day. So she had this planned all along. Right. So she had her ducks in order. So that yeah. She could. So she served us this ten day notice to quit on the twentieth. And I was like, I emailed her. Um, I also emailed a way of trying to get her to admit that she was in our unit not wearing a mask uh, and sick. And she was like, I was on antibiotics. So there she is admitting, uh, which I would use that in court. Mm -hmm. um, but um, you're saying she showed up basically on Halloween. Oh, yeah. So the well, the night before the first, um, I emailed the association and CC'd her and Peter. So we're all in the same email. And I I said, look, you've never once asked us for our exemptions. Like, here they are. Um, I said, please remove any and all fines pertaining to this matter because you're not allowed to do that. Um, and, and I never heard back from the association. And then on the 4th, you know, we paid our rent on the 1st. Mm -hmm. And then on the 4th, we... Um, she, I guess, went, that's when she went to serve uh, or to I court. And then we um, we got the court papers that Friday. Wow. Yeah. So that's, that's a lot. Where we are right now, just like watching our backs. We've had somebody, you know, calling. Uh, when you go to the buzzer and you use the buzzer to look my name up to for me to buzz you in, it calls my phone. So I didn't know if it was my mother-in-law or who it was buzzing my phone, but I would answer it. It's some guy that's yelling at us. It's, you know, if you're going to be serving, it should be a sheriff, right? You know, it should be a police officer. And even if not, at this point with how she's been acting, I would prefer a cop. Right. Um, and so some guy started calling us like, you're not letting me in. I need to serve you papers. And I wasn't even home. I was like, we're not home right now. I'm like, you do realize you're calling my phone. I'm just going to put it in my notes that you're not letting me in and you're just trying to try not to get served. And I'm like, do you not hear me? And he was making me because I'm breastfeeding again. Like, it's just like it's the stress of that alone. Of, of, and, you know, I'm having to like tr supplement with you know, lactation cookies and whatever I can to up my milk because I'm stressing so much about what is going to happen here with our children and our life that like my supply is going down. It's something that we shouldn't be dealing with. No, your priority should be nurturing and taking care enjoying, of the yeah, en enjoying. Enjoying our, our children, our life, and we're not. And it's miserable and it's sad. And, 
you know, like there's one, I know for sure that whatever happens regardless, like God wants us out of there. I know that. But do we deserve an eviction? No. You don't, it sounds like you don't want to be in there. So We don't want to be in there, no. But, but right we, now it's where you are and you want to save the money to get out properly. Yeah. We have no, we, we have nowhere else to go. We have no money, you know, saved like that to prepare us for a move with a family of five, you mm -hmm. know. So I, I don't know. What's so you've been out of work. You said you, you just started working again. Um, you're really trying to care for your, your four months old. And then obviously you have, the, you guys have the two other children. Yes. Um, and your boyfriend, is he working right now? Is he, he just got back to work. He took an FMLA. Okay. Um, and so we, you know, because of everything that was going on and me having a, a, a rough pregnancy oh. too, um, you know, with everything going on, it brought so much anxiety uh, that I just was not happy. I was just trying my hardest to be happy, but I couldn't. And it was just rough for me. I had gained a lot of weight too from being depressed. And, you know, now too, I'm dealing with postpartum depression and anxiety. I'm so sorry. You know, like I, I'm losing so much hair. Like I, it's just the, all these things that I'm, I'm going through mentally and physically. And then I have to worry about court and people threatening us and harassing us and all because you all because can't wear a mask. we can't wear a mask we, re we refuse we will not wear a mask and I don't think people realize that not every single person is the same mm -hmm. you can't just say put a medical device on your body yeah. and be gone you know you can't do that and I think because of that that's why the association knew that some people would have a problem um, and so he's implementing these fines. And so, you know, at the end of the day, our landlord doesn't care that we have these exemptions either. She just wants us to pay her and she wants us out so she doesn't have to deal with us. And sorry, but we, you made us sign a three-year lease. If we could have done one year, we would have been out your hair before this started, <laughs> but you told us three. So, so we're here. We're here. But, you know, I'm, I've been trying to find an attorney and so you're looking for an attorney <laughs> to take on your case. Mm -hmm. um, you're wanting to stay if for right now, if you can't, and through your lease, or at least until you guys get enough money to, because you want to buy a home. We want to buy a home. That's awesome. Well, yeah. I mean, now with the baby, we have to um, we have to get a at least a three bedroom. Yeah. Because uh, again, we have. Uh, Peter's daughter that comes with us every other weekend so we we need the space we can't cram three kids in a two two bedroom mm -hmm. um, so yeah so we were trying to buy a home and um, we were working on the pre-approval and everything and starting the steps but those steps were going along the lines of um, me getting back to work and then adding that in down the road mm -hmm. closer to August so right now, we are not in a position to buy. We're not prepared. The, we just, I don't know. I, I don't even know, like, what to do. That's why I came to you for help and, you know, just hoping that we can find somebody to represent us mm -hmm. and see what we can do. I, I don't know. Well, I'm really grateful that you did come talk to us, the whole team um, that we have, and... Um, we really just want to share our story, your story with everyone. And um, I think I think it'd be helpful to hear how can we best help you? Um, it sounds like an attorney, This you need this fast. This is coming up. You said the 6th, December December 6th. 6th. And this is for the eviction? Yeah, so they're first trying to actually, so the motion, we got a notice of motion and then a motion. And the motion actually... Um, States that they're trying to change judges. Okay. And so I questioned that and I looked up the judge because usually when they file these things and they're trying to get a different judge, it's because they either have some, they had a really, you know, relation with them or they had a case with them before. But it didn't state that. It just stated that just, it's basically they just wanted to. So I was up one night, you know, worrying like I always do right now. And I Googled this judge and 
He's actually um, the first openly gay um, judge to come out, but he's mm. all about civil rights. Okay, so he's about So rights. because he's all about civil rights, they're seeing that he is going to be a problem for them, probably. He that's probably a, a this constitutional is, defending. He, yeah, judge. this is probably, the, and that's just my guess right now. Mm -hmm. That's why they're first going with uh, trying to get a new judge. So, but the date still at this point is the December sixth okay. is our first court date, okay. and it's it is coming up fast. And you know, we just had to tell the kids um, yesterday, actually, like, look, like we're going through a lot right now. Um, we don't know if you know we're going to have a big Christmas this year, um, you know, and it's it's sad because they look at us like, oh, you know, they don't understand. They don't understand, and it's it's like we want to we want to help them. We want to get what we can, and we're going to try to do whatever we can. But at mm -hmm. the end of the day, we have a three thousand plus bill on our hands and an eviction, and the the cost of you know if we w or if or when we do move, having to move. Not to mention the association now implemented a new rule that you are to pay them a hundred dollars to move out. <laughs> um, no. Right. <laughs> So there's just like this craziness where we live and um, it's sad because there's a lot of people that I feel uh, are too, um, you know, we're outspoken. We, we speak out about our freedoms and our rights and stuff and a lot of people I think in the building are, I've heard, uh, are like afraid of this property manager because he is like. Because you're being bullied. They're being bullied and you know, they're. They probably see you guys being bullied and don't want to deal with it and are worried about probably doing and I'm not a, I, I don't own, own a condo there so they probably see more with right. the association than I do all right yeah absolutely so. so so we need to get you an attorney for the sixth and you we're gonna fight those fees yeah um, is that a set would that be a separate case no she is taking us to court uh, to pay those fees and to evict us. So she wrapped it all up. She's wrapping it all together. That's a lovely person. Um, and then you mentioned the three children and Christmas. Mm. Um, what, how can we come alongside in that? Like what would be, I mean, is, is it would it be blessings if we can raise money, gift cards, we do a registry, um, I'm sure there's need, it's because you went all these months without working, there's a pregnancy, you have these fines, the attorney, and you want to buy a home. It's a lot of stress and a lot of... It's a lot. Um, so um, we want to be able to help meet needs um, and wants, and that's yeah. good because I mean, I also, I mean, the fact that you're even asking us, um, I don't, we didn't get to share this part yet, but we were at, at a Patriot um, meeting at the Northern Illinois Patriot Collective, and um, a lot of us were there kind of sharing about what we do and how to get involved, and everyone had kind of gone, and, and Kula just goes like, can I, can I say something, and jumps up there, and there's probably like, I don't know, like 65 people there, and she had the guts to show up, first of all, with, you know, having three kids at home and everything going on and trying to nurse her baby, and I, I was just and awe how you chose you chose to come and then you chose to get up there and the first thing out of your mouth was I need help it was the first thing you said yeah. I was like I don't have anything to offer because everybody was there yeah. to with some type of like something organization there, yeah. and I was like I'm not part of anything I'm like I need help yeah and I was just um in awe of your humility and um it takes a really strong person to allow others to be the hands and feet of the church to come alongside. And so I just want to commend you for that, for being willing to say, I need help. And it's a really, it's a strength actually that I see in you. Thank you. Um, and, but yeah, she, so she showed up, she said, I need help and told her story. Um, people are, are crying <laughs> and I saw I everyone was, rush to you after yeah. being like, how can we help? And we're so glad that, you know, we can, we can come alongside as well. So, um, yeah, tell us how can we what what needs like what are what needs can we meet for you guys as as you know as a couple as parents um, and what needs can we meet you know maybe for the kids or and, and wants as well. I think um, 
what's most important right now is um, we all need to be happy. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're happy, the kids are happy. And um, being in that place, we're not happy. Um, if we could at least fight this and get the association to realize that they're doing wrong and mm -hmm. remove these fines, rem even remove those signs, really, um, because it's making, I think, everybody in the building uncomfortable, too, I would assume. Uh, then, you know, we can, then we can stay there. You know, definitely we would need a, a representation. Okay, so we, we need would to need an attorney. Um, as far as um, us as a couple, um, you know, help with figuring how to be able to get a good loan or something like that for a house. Okay. I, you know, I don't know if this is going to lead to an eviction and then we're not able to get one. I, I really don't know what's going to happen with that. And I guess as far as the kids, um, I, I don't have a list, you know, where I didn't, I didn't sit at home thinking, oh, let me make a list like, uh, materialistic things to me right now are not or really have ever have never been uh, important to me what I want to teach my kids is to fight for uh, their freedoms and um, and and being comfortable so comfortability is like number one like our living situation is I is, mean what about trying to get funds to for a down payment I mean I mean if that, that if going. that's something we can get I'd I, I would love that. I would I, mean, I would so would be, appreciate that. We have quite the network of you patriots I know. out there that um, are incredibly generous people. And thank um, you. So that would be awesome if we can help with that. I mean, how are you guys on, and I've been there. I've been a single mom with three kids at Christmas time, and it's a hard place to be because I, I feel you. Like, you, my kids don't need this, but, you know, I remember being like, oh, my kid could use like an undershirt. Like, <laughs> and, and I would say so, clothes. Yeah, like so clothes I, I get shoes. what you're saying. And, and that's kind of that comes. How are, co are we going on coats, boots, snow pants? I mean, honestly, they've grown within like the last year. And then, you know, we, we're at, we've, come, we've come to that point where we're like, let's try and stretch these, not, not stretch the clothes out, <laughs> but like let's try and just keep these on them as long as possible but they you know we've come to the point where you know we've had to uh, we have to we have to get clothes they need clothes um, and um, I guess you know if there's anything that they would want for Christmas um, then you know maybe let them choose yeah. I, I don't you know I don't know what they would want. They're six and eight, and they maybe we can get some gift cards or something like that, so we, they, they can, can they can do that, or you guys can go shopping, so that you know. I think there's still something about waking up Christmas and having know, some surprises. I know, I know, and it's sad because we had Brenna, that's my boyfriend's daughter. We had her this last weekend. You know, again yesterday we talked about um, how we might not have a Christmas, and our plan from four or five weeks ago was to start doing decorations this last weekend and we didn't and that's sad because it's like you guys chose not to do decorations no we're going to I mean but at the same time we have court December 6 what's going to happen so you don't know if you should decorate or pack right oh my goodness that's sad it's crazy I look at our home and it's like just like every day we're like walking around like zombies like what oh. happens it's not going to happen what happens after that court date if, it, if the judge doesn't rule in your favor? Do you know? What I mean, if they find someone who is all about the masks and the vaccines, then, then we're <laughs> screwed. <laughs> you know, we're going we're gonna to get the, the harsh end of things. And I, I would just hope that we could find or, you know, that person can... can see that we're a family we have young small children it's december freezing out um you know do you really want to kick us out over the we're mask not hurting anyone we're not hurting anybody we're we haven't done anything disrespectful or um you know ruined their property or anything so you, besides this mask thing there's literally been zero 
Do no, nothing. No contract breaking things. No destruction of anything. I mean, just it's just no. solely the masks. Solely the masks, and harassed over it. That's crazy. Pay me the effing money, is what we've been told. That's interesting that she wants her money that she doesn't even. There's no rule about this. There's no. Yeah, and I cc'd her in that email with her exemptions, and uh -huh. she responds back like, "You're you're a big liar." Oh. So they don't care. She doesn't care. No. She just wants you out. Yeah. So. And her money for effing. She for wants effing her money. effing money. Her effing money. Yeah. So oh. that's where we are right now. Is there anything else that you want to share with those watching, or? <clears throat> I guess. Um, um, I would really like to know if there's anybody else who's going through this and what they're doing mm -hmm. to help their mm -hmm. situation or what is, I just want to hear this, these stories because I've tried to look things up and I can't find anything on, on this. I feel like, you know, we're like the only ones getting evicted right now for not wearing a mask. I'm sure there's more, but I haven't heard of anybody. We're going to give some uh, opportunities for you guys to come alongside uh, Kula and her whole family. Um, and let's just rally behind them. One, if you are an attorney or you know an attorney, um, please contact us and let us know so we can connect you. Uh, if you maybe are a financial advisor or um, do real estate um, and you maybe ha see a way to um, come alongside, advise them, help them get on their feet in that way, um, and we will have, we're setting up a Give, Send, Go uh, so that we can um, provide just funds for them. Not, I'm believing that you guys are not going to have to pay these fees. So I'm not going to say to pay the $3,000 fines, but I, just to go towards um, your new home, um, getting close for your kids um, and, and the needs as well and taking care of yourself, um, finding a way that you're... Um, less stress as a mom. I've nursed five kids. I know it can be really yeah. stressful, and so I, my heart breaks for that because I know all you want to do is give your baby the best, and you should be able to. I just want to mentally be okay and not worry. Are you getting the help you need for the postpartum? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm glad to hear that. Yes. I'm really, really glad yeah, to hear absolutely. that. Absolutely. Um, I dealt with it with my first, so oh. I knew that I would get it again. <laughs> but yeah. No. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to provide opportunities then for you guys to come alongside. And, you guys, let's, let's do this. Let's, let's get them the down payment for a house. Let's get them the things they need. Let's get them an attorney that will stand up for their, their rights. Um, so, again, we're going to have the information here for you to contact us so that we can come alongside Kula and her family. Thank you for thank being you. here. And um, I'm excited for an incredible end to this. I can't wait to see how it ends. Story. Yes, <laughs> I know it's crazy, but I can't wait. I can't wait for it to end and us put it behind us. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you again for being here. Thank, thank you. you guys for joining us. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what we can do to help Kula. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Absolutely.